Andrew Williams. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I rise on behalf of New Zealand First to oppose uh, this bill. It uh, reminded me today when I heard about the uh, nickel and diming of our paper boys, uh, a song that I sang when I was the Artful Dodger, back on the stage, when I was the Artful Dodger, and when Fagan sang that famous song, You've Got to Pick a Pocket or Two. You've got to pick a pocket or two, boy. You've got to pick a pocket or two. And, 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 I, and I could recall being on the stage back then, and as a young person who delivered newspapers back then, and who made money put delivering newspapers and delivering the milk on a cold morning in Waipakarau, I could remember those words of Fagan. And we are reminded of those words today by this incredibly, incredibly austere budget that ends up basically going after the young children of New Zealand because they won't even get a tax credit for the small wages that they make. The babysitter who makes a, a few extra dollars and then won't get a tax credit for it. This is appalling, Mr Speaker. This means that basically this, this, government, this, government, this government has run out of, out of ideas so much so that they have to start going after the young children of this country who earn a pittance. Why didn't they go after the likes of uh, the people who sold Trade Me, who sold Trade Me for $700 million and didn't pay a dollar in tax? So you can sell Trade Me for $700 million, but they don't go after them, they go after the children of this New Zealand. Why, why do they look forward three years and only suggest, Mr Speaker, only suggest that they can make a $197 million surplus in 2014-15 in three years. Mr Speaker, if this was a poll, that would be less than the margin of error. Less than the margin of error. If they can only come up with a $197 million surplus in 2014-15 on the government's budget, then basically they are working within the margin of error. We heard all the promises in 2009-10. We heard the promises in 2010-11 and they were repeated in the House today. And all those promises of the two previous budgets uh, under the Minister Bill English have come to nothing. Most of the promises have just been absolutely not worth the huge piles of paper that they're written on. Not worth the paper they're written on. Because the promises of those last two budgets have come to nothing, the promises of this budget will be the same. We heard today from the Right Honourable Winston, Spe Winston Peters, who was um, in the House here, with a number of the members here, when the mother of all budgets was delivered by Ruth Richardson 20 years ago. And the Right Honourable Winston Peters said, this is a repeat all over again of failed measures by the National Government, failed policies going back 20 years. It was almost, and we could call this the mini-me budget. This is the mini-me budget. This is Bill English, who was a mini-me back there under Ruth Richardson in those days. And now Mini-Me has grown up to be the big Mini-Me who's delivering the same budget 20 years later that basically is another failed budget. Mr Speaker, the Revenue Minister is trying to net sprats instead of going after the sharks. This, this is a nickel and dime budget. This is a pathetic budget that really does bring New Zealand down to the lowest common denominator, just maybe putting us slightly above Greece in terms of our financial capabilities. Instead of this government going after the big picture stuff, they're going after the little spreads. Mr Speaker, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised when you see today that there are headlines in the papers already after this budget. Headline today in the New Zealand Herald this afternoon. This is a most forgettable and dull budget. This is the most forgettable and dull budget. Imagine the biggest newspaper in this country. That's how they describe this budget. Further, Mr Speaker, the New Zealand Manufacturers and Exporters Association this afternoon has put out a statement saying... This budget still needs step change to turn around the economy. The fundamental problems, the fundamental problems, such as a lack of export growth, have once again gone ignored. That's from our own New Zealand Manufacturers Association and Exporters Association. They say the fundamentals have been ignored, and once again there will be a lack of export growth. That's, that's the uh, uh, chief executive of the New Zealand Manufacturers and Exporters Association. You should know his name. You should know his name. I've got his name written down here, but I won't give it to you. I'll, I'll arrange an appointment for you to go and see him. But, Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, it gets worse. Mr Speaker, it gets worse. Today, today, the Overseas Merchandise Trade Statistics were released today. 
and, and I wonder whether, whether the minister from Christchurch there knows what the figures were released today. Do you know? Does, Mr Speaker, does the minister know? They were not good because today the overseas merchandise trade statistics show that exports are down 17 per cent on April last year. Down 17 per cent on April last year. That is appalling, Mr Speaker. This country is dependent on trading our way out of the recession that we keep getting referred to by the government. And if we do not export more, this country will continue to slide. To have a 17 per cent drop compared to 12 months ago means this government is not performing, Mr Speaker. But it's not surprising, Mr Speaker, not surprising, because their future growth they see is in the likes of a conference centre in Auckland, all looking inwards, not looking at the harbour, not looking at the beauty of Mount Eden or the beauty of, of, the, of the Waitemata, but looking inwards on their poking machines, looking inwards on their 500 poking machines. That's their, that's their vision for New Zealand, a conference centre where people fly from all over the world, all over the world, to come to beautiful New Zealand to see the, what's been provided by our Minister of Tourism. Who is he again? Who is our Minister of Tourism? Do you, does anyone know who our Minister of Tourism is? Oh, Mr Spray and Walkaway. I forgot. That's right, Mr Spray and Walkaway, our Minister of Tourism. Come all the way here and what do they get? Our economic development package, our economic development package for this country is 500 more poking machines. 500 more. And Mr Speaker, isn't it ironic that those 500 poking machines are going to be in the very same building that the National Party had its election night party in? The very same building that the, election, uh, that the National Party had its national conference in? And in the very same building that they launched their 2011 election uh, uh, campaign and their 2008 election campaign. Launched in the very same building that there's going to be 500 more poking machines. It's interesting, isn't it, that their economic development seems to go hand in hand with where they had the conferences. Seems to go very much hand in hand where they had the conferences. And you just do wonder where the strategy is, Mr Speaker. And so when you see figures today, and when you see today where we're told, oh, there's going to be future hopes out of Christchurch and it's all going to start. But when's it starting? We were down there last month and it seems to be still all coming down. There's not a lot going up, Mr Speaker. Not a lot going up. And, and there, seems to be, there seems to be an awful lot of tradesmen and an awful lot of builders heading off to Australia and other places where they can get work. There's not a lot happening down there. Not a lot happening down there. So, Mr Speaker, New Zealand First certainly does not support this budget. We think this is, again, this is just like the mother of all budgets in 1991. This is another absolutely hopeless budget for the New Zealand economy. The New Zealand economy is not going to gain from this. This is not addressing issues such as where is the New Zealand dollar, what are we going to do about the New Zealand dollar and, and it being over, over um, inflated in terms of its value. How are we going to stimulate exports? How are we going to help grow the export sector? How are we going to create jobs? This, this budget is all about nickel and diming. This is all about taking the money out of the young people of New Zealand. This is about attacking middle class and poor New Zealand families and keeping the, the money in the hands of the rich and the wealthy. Keeping the money in the hands of the mates of the National Party, basically. This is about protecting their mates, keeping their mates in, in good pasture, particularly those uh, you know, who go to the likes of the uh, ga gambling halls and can use the pokey machines and have disposable income to go and, 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 and get involved with all that sort of thing. But, Mr Speaker, what we need to do is have a rethink. We need have a need to rethink. And, Mr Speaker, at the next election, I'm sure this country will re-elect a government that will start to stimulate the economy, stimulate exports, and get alongside of the likes of the New Zealand Manufacturers and Exporters Association and get this economy moving and not attack the children of New Zealand to nickel and dime the budget. Mark Mitchell. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It's a great pleasure that I uh, stand in support of the team.